Hello and welcome to the 43rd part in this series for Beginners Programming C. Last video then we were inside this function here, oh this function sorry, inside this program here where the user was entering, able to enter up to four racing cars and print the list of cars out to the screen. And I want in this video, it'll be a bit shorter than the last one, just to finish off this program before then moving on to the linked list implementation. And we need to implement here, implement here this print list um, function to print the entire list of cars out. So if we think about how to do this, and again, although it's nothing new, it's probably good revision for the, the structure topics that were covered a couple of videos ago, we need to take in our full array of racing cars. So we can say racing car uh, and the type, we'll call this then the car array. So we take in an array of cars. And what we also need to take in though is the number of cars that we have in our list because we need to know how many from this array we want to print off and certainly don't want when we loop through them to go over the uh, end of the array. So we'll change this list print now to car list. And let's put a colon there. And now let's make a an integer for looping through the cars and we'll call this num and set this to zero. Oh no, we've already got num defined. Let's call this car index and set this to zero. And now we can make a for loop and say so for car index equals naught. And we'll say car index is less than num and car index plus plus. And now what we need to do simply is print the car details. Now one way of doing this uh, would be to say, well, we'll do a print f, and then we'll say the car, and let's put the number of the car first, and then we'll say the name, so we've got the string, and then we want to say the speed where we have our integer. And then let's also put a couple of well let's put a, a line break and then let's just put some dashes there so at least we can separate the cars slightly at the end. And now to fill in this information we're going to use our car array here which is the structure racing car. So the first thing we want though is the number car so we'll say car index but rather than starting from zero let's start from one with the car number so we'll do a car index plus one then what we need is the name. So we're inside car array at car index and we're going to be looking for the name. And then the last thing we need is the speed. So we're in car array and again we're at car index obviously, the current index, and we'll go for speed and close that. And that then prints our list for us then to the screen. And let's actually take this printf statement here and just go to the bottom here and say something like let's say total and number of cars like this and put another new line after this and we'll say num. Okay so that's our print list function but we're going to make a small change to that in a moment but I just want to compile this and check that this is wor working and we also of course down inside main need to, well we've invoked our print list here but we need to send in now obviously our all cars array and we also need to send in now our num cars to say how many are actually in the array. So if I bring the terminal over and let's just do some compilation of this and run and hope that there are no awful typing errors in here and I haven't actually run it yet either so hold your breath time. Okay so it looks like things have started, I really need to put a print statement in there but let's then say add and let's add now a Ford with a speed of 10 and let's add in an Opal and be politically incorrect and add an Opal in with a speed of 8 and now let's just call print and you can see it's printed our car list of Ford speed 10, Opal speed 8, total 2 cars. All very good. One more thing we could do though to improve our print function a little bit, and this is something you'll come across in a lot of C programs because it cleans up the code quite a bit, is to use a pointer here um, when we've been sending in our array here. So let's make a pointer here and call it car. And now what we're going to do at the start here 
of this loop is actually set our car pointer at the car that we want to look at in the array. So it's looking at the address of where the car at car index is. And the reason for this is, is purely that it allows us really to clean up this code here a little bit. Because now we can just do car like this and car speed like this. And it's just a cleaner way, I find anyway, of being able to write your code, and particularly when you're dealing with much larger structures, rather than typing out the array, the open and close brackets, and the index inside. So that's how we would use a pointer here to do that. And if I just bring across the terminal again, and compile and run the program, and just go add and forward 10, and add and opal 10, and print the list, then we've got exactly the same result. Interesting, if I go add now, and let's do red bull 10, you'll notice it now says we have a pass, passing input because we're using our scan f to assume that there is an unbroken string uh, being entered as the name here. So also our passing input detection is working. I can still print our list out and everything's okay. Good, so how is all this relevant then to linked lists? Well, the problem or the fundamental problem with this program here is that say we had the program running but a user came and said, yeah, I want to be able to enter eight cars rather than four. Then what we need to do is actually redefine max cars as eight and then recompile the program and send them the program. So they could now have a program working with eight cars. And that isn't a very good way of doing things, as you can imagine. It's much better to have a way of being able to have an infinite number of cars effectively until you run out of memory on your computer. And the user can add or take away as many as they want from and, and the way you do this is implementing something called a linked list. So what you end up with is a list of structure pointers that are all linked to each other. In almost exactly the same way, way an array is, um, but not in the fixed rigid way that they're arranged alongside each other in the memory. And as I said in the previous video, it's often put across in really, really complicated manner, but it's actually really simple and really, really useful. And in the next video, we'll start altering this program and having a look at the concepts behind the, using a linked list. So thanks very much for watching. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.